Human Traffic, The Board Game, by Jason Bates. Part 1. Game Setup First off, take all the sets of cards and shuffle them. These should include the Relationship card deck, the Item card deck, the Order card deck, the Hell card deck and the Syndicate card deck. Please ensure that there's enough room around the board for all these decks of cards to have discard piles, as you'll need them. Next, shuffle all the locations and place them in their location squares on the game board. There should be 10 of these locations, and these locations will remain present throughout the game. They will not change. Next, give each player a help sheet and a yellow hope token located on the 10th square. Then. Give each player a nationality card, placing it on the help sheet. These cards will give the player which colour to use later on in the game. Each player should also receive a personality card, giving a special ability for the player to use. Finally, put all the play pieces in the centre of the board. Now we're all ready to start playing, but before we do, let's just take a quick look at... Part 2. St. Petersburg. The map of St. Petersburg contains four major parts, first the centre, Nevsky Prospect, and three outer regions, first of which is Petrogradsky District in the green, next is St. Petersburg proper in the blue, and finally is the Admiral District in the purple. In the late game the players will travel to the yellow parts in the final escape to the safe zone. Part 3. Turn Order the first phase of the game is the order phase. At the start of the turn, check if an order card is active. If so, then progress to the action phase. If not, then draw another order card, placing it at the top of the order card discard pile. Players must comply with the order or face the consequences. Bear in mind that the first turn of the game skips this phase. The second phase is the action phase. The youngest player starts first, taking turns clockwise. Each turn, each player has two action points to spend. What the player can spend the action points on can be seen on the help sheet in this area. If the player would like to spend more action points, then hope can be used instead at the same rate of the action chosen. Once the player has chosen their actions, then the next player spends their action points, and so forth. Remember that when using a consumable item, relationship power, or personality power, resolve the effects immediately. Also, when making use of a passive item, it must first be in your inventory for one turn before being activated and used passively in the passive item slot. The final phase of a turn is the resolution phase. After all players have completed their actions, then the order card must be resolved. If the player has failed to comply, then they must draw the specified amount of syndicate cards. To resolve syndicate cards, the symbol of the syndicate card and item relationship card must be the same. If the condition is not met, then the player must follow the fail text. After this has been resolved for all players, this turn ends and another begins, returning to the order phase. Part 4. Specific Rules Hope acts as the player health points. Once it reaches zero, then the player draws two hell cards and dies, with the hell cards acting as the cause. Syndicate cards are the main cause of the loss of hope, but hope can be lost by performing extra actions. Hope can be gained from certain locations, items and relationships. Use it wisely. Syndicate cards ordinarily are drawn from either failing to comply with order cards or entering Nevsky Prospect. To resolve syndicate cards, the condition must be met by matching the icon using an item card or relationship card. This doesn't cost an action point. If the condition cannot be met, then the player must follow the fail text, resulting in discarded item cards or subtracted hope. Once the syndicate card has been resolved, place it face up in the syndicate card discard pile. Each player has a personality power outlined on their personality card. 
They are free to use, but have a limited use as shown on the card. Once all used up, flip the personality card face down. To gain items, the player must search. This costs two action points and allows the player to draw from the item card deck. The location power of the corner shop allows the player to draw two item cards from the item card deck, then discarding one. Items are split into three categories. Utility items are used to meet the conditions of syndicate cards. They are crucial for the final escape. Consumable items are used for short-term gain. They cost one action point to use, after which are placed on the item discard pile. And passive items are items that are always active, but they can only be on one passive item active at a time. All items can be discarded for free, but must be discarded if used in response to syndicate cards. Players may hold a maximum of six in items in their inventory unless they have a passive item to increase this. Players can transfer an item for one action point, but only at the consent of both players. Only one item may be passed or given at one time. To gain relationships, the player must either draw from an item card deck or from the relationship card deck. To draw from the relationship card deck, the player must activate the location power of the park or the orphanage, costing two action points. Strong relationship cards are the key to escape. To pass the final escape, the player needs three relationships to progress. Some relationships can be used like consumable item cards, costing an action point to use. However, relationship cards stay on the help sheet after use only face down, inactive. Some relationship cards act as a utility card and can be used to meet the conditions of a syndicate card. They are only discarded when used to progress through the final escape. Players may hold a maximum of three relationship cards unless they hold a passive item to increase this. But some relationships are toxic and are useless in the final gauntlet, so they must be removed at the cost of three hope per toxic relationship. Part 5. The Final Escape The players must escape together to trigger the final escape to the safe zone. This means they must all be in the same location in the Petrograd Sea District that connects to the final escape via the black line. In this final escape, players must use all their items and relationship cards collected over the course of the game. To initiate the final escape, the players, starting with the youngest player, must discard a relationship card of their choice. This will move the player to the first square marked with a 1. Here they must draw one syndicate card and resolve it. The rest of the players will do the same in clockwise order. After all players have done this, the youngest player must discard a second relationship card of their choice, progressing them to the second square. The second square requires two syndicate cards to be drawn and resolved. The rest of the players will do the same in clockwise order. Finally, a third relationship card must be discarded to progress to the final square. Here, three syndicate cards each to be drawn and resolved. After resolving these in syndicate cards, the player has successfully escaped and won the game. But if hope reaches zero before then, they have lost and draw two hell cards detailing their demise. So there you have it, the end of the game. Thank you all so much for watching this video and hopefully you've learned how to play Human Traffic. To finish off, I hope that you have a tremendous time playing and that you will be transformed by playing this just as much as ours transforms making it. See you next time, and goodbye.